it's not a matter of uh, is it going to be in the future of healthcare. It is the future of healthcare. Let's just stop right there. That's it. The question is who's going to take it? Who's going to champion it? And we are fools if we let this slip away. It is shocking to me that um, EEG has been around as long as it has. It's shocking to me that biofeedback has been along, around as long as it has and no one has marshaled it um, and used it more. I'm reading book after book after book right now on, on neurofeedback and I, 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 these are chiropractic texts. I, like, I keep turning down the pages going, oh my God, oh my God, oh, that's so chiropractic, that's so chiropractic. The models are strikingly similar. It fits so well into what we do. But make no mistake, stress response is the future of healthcare. Who's going to do it? Okay, before I used to have a conversation with patients that said, here's your EMG, and typically that was a more um, intuitive reading. They'd say, yeah, I feel that. Yes, I feel that. Okay, so now we're, we're talking to pain. And then I would try to make the shift by showing the thermal scans and say, okay, this is not intuitive. You don't know that you're warm here or that you're cold there. And so that was a bridge to something beyond what they could feel. but it didn't touch them in a way that they related to on a visceral level. When you say to someone, you're warm here and you're cold there, and that can mean this about the nervous system, you see some people looking up and maybe some people get it. It's pretty abstract. It can start a conversation, it's valuable. But when you show them this and you say, when you get stressed, you get stressed for a long time. You don't, you don't easily come right back down to earth. And that after you've been stressed for a while, you have a hard time paying attention. And when you say to someone that, based on this, I can see that your emotions run high, and that when you close your eyes, sometimes it's more difficult and, and we might talk about what you do before you go to bed to distract yourself. And they're going, how in the world do you know this about me? The aha moment for them is that I get them. Not them on an abstract, neurological, maybe that's wellness level. But I get them where they're living, in their home, in their own concerns about themselves. Even before I could find a way to explain to them how my adjustments make sense to them, they're saying, wow, this doctor understands me at a level no one has asked before. No one has looked before. If he understands me that well, he must know what to do about it. And so I'm stumbling trying to describe why chiropractic matters. And they're like, you know, you had me at... Why, do you, why don't you sleep well at night? <laughs> I did move to New York City, and I did begin practicing, and I did not have the neuroinfinity. And honestly, it was a bit of an uphill climb. I was using the same technology that I'd been using for nearly 15 years. And it kind of had a uh-huh value with the patients. It's like, uh-huh. Is it because we've advanced so much in 15 years and New York, always at the cutting edge, had advanced that much more and I was getting behind? It's possible. Is it because that technology was no longer answering questions that I've developed about what we're doing? Is it the doctor or is it the patient? This has made practicing where I am now a whole different experience. I was telling Dee Dee earlier that I get a lot of my patients through 
health care, uh, health spas, gyms. People who are already interested in health. I've been preaching wellness for 20 years. But the way I was preaching it wasn't getting through. But now, when I'm talking to patients about anxiety, talking to patients who don't sleep well, which is a very high percentage of the people that I work with in New York City. And I can show them why. I can show them what else is going on in their body and how they can see the, the physiological changes in their body as a result of the stress response. They know they're stressed on some level, but they didn't realize it was the basis for all these other problems that they see. But you know what's interesting, David? They didn't see those as health problems. They didn't think that's why you would go to a doctor, let alone a chiropractor. And when I sit down and I show them there's this and this and this and this going along with their physiology, and what that usually creates are problems like this and this and this and this, and you see the eyes getting bigger, that hard shield that we have in New York, am I going to listen to you? Am I going to believe you? High skepticism melts very quickly. It's like they're saying, you understood me. You get me. Almost embarrassingly so. There is no better healthcare profession than chiropractic to use this technology and this information The medical doctor will take a look at this and say, okay, you're stressed. What can we give you to bring your stress down? What chemical can we introduce to the body that will change your galvanic skin response, that will change your hand temperature? That's not changing the brain. The psychologists are using this and using talk therapy. They're using the neurofeedback. Um, and they're seeing tremendous success. But in terms of creating a pattern interrupt, in terms of creating a reset to the central nervous system, the access we have as chiropractors is phenomenal. It's the same paradigm. Overlay the two and put us to work. We can heal the world.